I have so many titles. Thanks, Jay. Um, I am John Gamash. I'm the Associate Director of the Woods Hole Film Festival. I want to welcome everybody to this wonderful reunion uh, for the short film and the world premiere of the short film, As We Are. Um, I just want to go over a few things as far as the festival goes. We are very excited to be able to do this virtually this year. It's a big departure from what we've done in the past. Um, but we're hoping everybody's having a good time. But we do want to remind everybody one important thing is and that is to vote for your films. So while you're on the virtual platform or if you've bought a ticket for a film, you can go to that film page. Um, at any point and you'll see five little stars but next to the watch later uh, button and you can click one for your lowest score five for your highest score and register your vote for our audience awards which are now going to be held uh, august 16th um, we'll be announcing all of our audience winners jury winners and director's choice winners then um, but besides that i basically just want to i'm just really excited to do this um, I, you know, I watched this film and, and I, I signed myself up to, to host this Q&A. So sorry, Michael and Robin, you got me, but I really wanted to, uh, to moderate this one. Um, so this is, a, this is a wonderful short documentary that's part of our, our program this year. And uh, Robin is an is a alumni of Woods Hole, has had uh, films in Woods Hole before. And um, we were just, um, she wrote, wrote to us and told us she was working on this. And we were, we're kind of got a little excited even before we saw it because we, we know Robin and we knew this film was about and it didn't definitely just dis, didn't disappoint. So we are very excited to have it in the program and to be host, hosting its uh, world premiere in this time of COVID and quarantine and, and insanity. So um, without uh, <clears throat> me rambling on too much longer, I'm just going to uh, allow you all to introduce yourselves um, in the way you like to introduce yourselves and, uh, and welcome you here to the Q&A. I'll, I'll start, we'll start with Robin Milleronger. Yeah. Unmute, there we go, yes. you can hear me? <laughs> yeah, I'm Robin Milleronger and, um, you know, as John said, I'm, this is my second time to be in the Woods Hole Film Festival and I have to say, I miss Woods Hole. Mm -hmm. I wish we were there. I long for Woods Hole, but, Maybe next year, we'll see. At any rate, it's, uh, it, I'm just thrilled to be here and uh, hope everybody has enjoyed the As We Are. Do you want me to talk at all about how it came to be or? Um, yeah, I think let's maybe later. just go around. Um, and everyone wants to just um, kind of introduce themselves, their name and kind of what their role in this particular project was, so. Okay, so my role was producer, kind of putting it all together, finding the director who I found and this marvelous guy, Michael Faulkner, who I'd actually met, this is an interesting aside, with my previous film going on the film festival uh, route, the tour, I ended up me meeting Michael in Baltimore at the Maryland Film Festival. And so he was, he came to mind immediately because Evan and Caroline and CJ, everyone was living in the Maryland area, area and that's where this was gonna happen. So serendipity, it all worked. Yep, film festivals bringing people together, so. Right. And Michael, hello. Hello, hello. Uh, thanks for joining us, everyone. Thank you, John. I'm thrilled to be part of the, participating in the Woods Hole Film Festival for the first time. Um, I am the director of As We Are, as Robin just said, uh, we. We met and, and a little while later, we were making a film together and um, it's great to be here. I wanna go ahead and pass it over to CJ. Thanks, Michael. Um, this is a good segue because I have a little bit of a distraction, <laughs> a cute distraction. This oh. is Carol Sue. She's very eager to say hello to everyone. Hi, Carol Sue. Dress. <laughs> That's right. Wow. It's very spinny. So those of you who are watching who watched the film already, um, this is the sweet little uh, five and six month old baby that I was carrying around in the film. <laughs> so um, I am a board certified music therapist. I am um, owner of the private practice Annapolis Music Therapy Services. And most importantly, 
in the context of this film, I'm the executive director and co-founder of the Musical Artist Nonprofit. So we're a 501c3. I co-founded the organization with um, Sunny Seferati, who's not able to be here on the call, but she um, identifies as an autistic advocate. And when we thought about starting an organization, um, it was really important to me to have uh, people who identify as on the autism spectrum as part of the organization. So that's how we took off. We're a disability rights organization and we um, did this wonderful fundraising event and we're so fortunate just to have connected with Evan and, and Caroline. So thank you. Do you want to tell everybody bye? Bye. <laughs> Perfect. Um, I would um, head up to Evan and uh, Andrea. Yeah. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Evan, and me and my mom are so excited. And I want to have a special thanks to our director, Mr. Michael Falker, and special thanks to our producer, Robin Unger. And we're very excited to all hear you asking me questions, and and everyone's very excited to hear it. And I will be glad to answer. Oh, we're oh, here. Would you like to say anything to Andrea? No, I don't need to say anything after that. That was very well okay. said, right? Perfect. Yeah. Okay. And hi, Carolyn. How are you? I'm doing good. So I just want to say thank you for all of you, including Michael and Robin, to recording of when I'm singing at stage at Marin Hall, standing in a light. And I just want to say thank you for all of you, for both of you, for Robin. Thank you very much. Both Perfect. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you very much. Couldn't have said it better. And you, you had met Michael at a film festival and, and you had reached out to him to, to direct this story. But how did you come to hear about the story where you are um, in the first place? Yeah. Okay. So I went to school. I think it was middle school where we met Andrea. And, um, and this was in, you know, out here on the West Coast. And Andrea, we stayed friends through high school. And then as things occur, Andrea moved. And I did not hear from Andrea again for many, many years until a mutual friend sort of got us together for a lunch one time. And this, this was probably 10 or 12 years ago. So I had never met Evan, but I got a phone call from Andrea, actually from the mutual friends saying this amazing concert is going to happen in May of 2017. And we were thinking maybe you'd be interested in this story. May, it might make a nice documentary short. And so I was intrigued and uh, connected with Andrea, went to visit Andrea and Evan, and kind of the rest is history. I just sort of fell in love with Evan and fell in love with the idea of this project. And then, as I say, it was just, uh, you know, it just all fell into place with Michael initially saying, well, I don't know, I'm, I'm bu everybody's busy, of course. I'm busy, but let me go meet them. And, you know, let's see. And of course he went and he met them. And I got a call later that day from Michael saying, you know, I'm in, let's, let's do it. So, that was sort of how it all came into place. You knew that would happen though too, right? If he'd met right. them, he would do it, right? But you know, the funny <laughs> thing is too, when I, I think back now, I had just started the journey with my other short film, Soy Cubana, which went to Woods, Hill, uh, Woods Hole. Right. And I think it was shortly into that run that I got that phone call. I think it was maybe in August or September and you know, being in the middle of, of the festival run and then saying yes to this other project. Now, when I think about it, knowing what it was like, I, I think, I can't believe we did it, you know, that we pulled it off. But it well, was you, meant- You definitely did. So Michael, you, you get this call from Robin, who you met once, I'm assuming, at a film festival. Um, what were your thoughts and what kind of, I, I guess, swayed you towards deciding this is a, the project you really wanted to take on? Well, that's a great question. I mean, the, the, the easy answer is as soon as I met Evan and Andrea, who I met first, and then later Caroline, as we were 
and CJ as we kept filming. But at first I met, uh, well, I'll describe it. You know, I talked to Robin at length and we thought, what can this be? And then we ultimately arrived at, well, you know, you really need to meet uh, Evan and Andrea and just talk about it and see what's what. And I remember thinking, you know, I'm not gonna bring a camera the first time I meet them. I'm just gonna go talk, we're gonna get to know each other. But Andrea had said, well, you know, you might, you know, bring the camera, who knows, you know? And so I did, I, I sort of brought a little, a little something, not like the full production suite or anything, but, um, and uh, I was, uh, it's kind of um, represented in the beginning of the film. I drive into their, into their neighborhood and I knock on the door and I can hear music coming from within the house. And I think that's really when I knew that something was, there's something special about the, what was happening. And uh, Andrea came to the door and I came in and Evan was at the piano, just like in the movie and uh, playing a, a wonderful, I can't remember exactly if it was Gershwin right then, Evan, do you remember what we were, what you were playing? What you were playing? I think it uh, might have been. Gershwin. I think it was Gershwin. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And yeah. I just, you know, I just felt uh, very excited. And then we sat down and talked for a while and I got to know them. And I started filming. I had to pull out my iPhone because I realized quickly that there was a lot of great dialogue happening and I just needed multiple coverage. So some of the beginning of the film is, is just very guerrilla, like get, get what you get the dialogue, get that. And, um, and, we, and I went, I called uh, Robin later and said, so, you know, I think we can really, let's explore this. And, and that was pretty much the story. I know it's a rambling uh, explanation, but, but it was just, we connected, didn't we, Evan and, and Andrew? We, we really, you know, we were having fun and thought, you know, let's, yeah. this will be great. I'm just going to spend more time with these folks. Mm -hmm. And then uh, not long after that, um, they introduced me to CJ and Caroline. Well, I was going to, I guess, ask Evan and Andrea because they have this, I get, you know, basically stranger come to your house and, you know, the film is, is so, um, you know, intimate and there's always, as you know, as documentary filmmaker, like access is one thing, but then like getting to the point where you people, your subjects are just being themselves, right? And, yeah. but the film feels like you really were able to, to capture that and, and a big part of the film for me was just watching the relationship between Andrea and Evan. I thought that was just a really yeah. nice <laughs> kind of accent to it um, as well. But it really felt like, I don't know how to describe it, but they were comfortable with you in the filmmaking team yeah. doing this. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about that, Andrea and Evan, about how it felt to have somebody with the camera following you around for? <laughs> Um, well, I'll answer it. Well, somebody would film me, like Michael. like Michael. We performed, we just went to the Studio 39, that I met uh, David Koenig, and um, we went to the music piano room. And then at this point, we briefly stopped and we, as we heard a strange noise and then we realized it's like, oh, it's only a workman. And then I asked, excuse me, gentlemen, and I asked, excuse me, gentlemen, can you stop doing it? And then he's like, like hey, 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 you don't have to. And, okay. and I was like, I know it's them, but I, what I, and I told David, like, it's very distracting. Okay. And then he realized it is distracting. Right. So let me say that um, Michael, within about, I don't know, five minutes, became like a part of the family. <laughs> so it's, it's very easy to open yourself up to somebody who um, establishes themselves, you know, at the get-go as a, as a friend and somebody who's really there to, to, um, to tell the story. And, uh, of course, Robin, knowing Robin for all those years, I knew... Um, you know, what kind of a person she was. And, you know, it, it's, you leave yourself open and you're sort of raw, but I knew that what we were going to get was really something special. And, you know, I've wanted the story told for many, many years because I, um, I've seen all the, you know, the troubles that, or the, 
really the challenges that Evans had over the years. He had neurosurgery when he was three, and then all the, you know, a host of, of challenges associated with autism, but all of a sudden we realized that there was this great gift of music, and so I wanted somebody to be able to, to tell that story, the power of music in the lives of, of these individuals. So who better to tell the story than Michael and, and Robin? So. I think that uh, speaks to your instincts, Robin, too, that you knew you knew what the story was, but you also had a good idea that this was the right person to go in and, and do this with you. So no, I, I failed to say that my background, I always think people know this already, but my background was speech language pathologist. And all the years that I've been doing that, I always wanted to make a documentary film about clients that I've seen, you know, see people with traumatic brain injury and you see the recovery process and you think later in retrospect, too bad we couldn't have documented that. So when, that was the other thing, when this project came along right. and, and Andrea contacted me, it was kind of like, oh my God, this is really what I've always wanted to do. I've always wanted to make a film about people, the people that I see uh, professionally in clinic. And, um, so it again it just was kind of a dream come true and it, it, it to have evan and caroline and cj everybody on board and being so open in terms of you know the realities of autism the you know the the difficulties that people have the challenges that people have in terms of just life and communicating it was just again a very special project to me and Michael just I you know the two of us had our films Michael's film in Maryland was a, a feature also music so we both were coming from these films our previous films which involve music the joy of music and the fact that music sometimes is the common language for people it's almost the playing ground that common ground that that connects people and so, you know, again, it was when words fail, try music. It just, it just was sort of the perfect fit, I think, for everybody. Uh, so CJ, I guess CJ and Caroline, this could be to either of you, but, um, you know, these four had a plan to make a film and uh, it involved you. How did you feel about being part of, of a film and then how did that, did that have any impact on you? Obviously this is a big event and you know, a lot going on. How did, uh, how did you, I guess, receive, you know, being part of a film? How did you feel about? Well, being, uh, while you're mill filling, I feel pumped at the end of the end of them. I was singing at stage. Mm -hmm. Well, it was very obvious you were excited. <laughs> Yeah, it was fantastic. It, it made me cry. I mean, that that, mm -hmm. that scene, the whole concert, it was fantastic. But, Emotional. Yeah. But, so CJ, how did uh, this was a big undertaking, obviously, all the way around, and then uh, we have a film crew on top of that. So what was your world like through this? And obviously, a very small, very small human. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think it was kind of all a blur, actually, <laughs> that I think about it. Looking back, you know, having a, a, a very young uh, a newborn and a baby, I um, I loved the, the whole experience. I think it was it's such an honor for me to work with Evan and Caroline and so many other performers that um, were there during the event. So um, it was a lot of planning leading up to it. Um, and yeah, gosh, there's so many things I could say. It's really hard to decide, you know, one specific thing. Um, I will say, you know, initially, just going back to like the initial meeting when we, uh, you know, Andrea uh, facilitated a meeting um, with Robin and Michael. So I met both of you for the first time uh, at Pan Arabrad. It was just a very simple, meeting you know just talking about what the documentary was going to be about um and i just thought okay cool let's let's okay, do it i remember that now mm -hmm. 
I remember that now, CJ, and meeting you, and we weren't sure what it, uh, it's so easy to forget, like after it's all done and edited and put together, that in the beginning, we had no idea what was gonna happen or what was, I knew that you guys had this amazing concert that you were putting on, and that, you know, we wanted to follow the progress of that. But I met you, I remember meeting you at Panera Bread, and I, now tell me if I'm wrong, but I feel like that you were anticipating I was going to film you when we first met. Was is that right? Yes. But I, but I didn't show up with a camera, so there was like there was like a little confusion. <laughs> and they're like, "You want to meet me again?" And I said, "Yeah, yeah definitely." Well, it's funny because in that first initial meeting, I had so many thoughts and ideas that I really wanted to express, and um, and then I remember at other times in the filming process we would meet and talk and I had, again, like so many ideas. I mean, I think that's a very common feature of people who tend to be entrepreneurial and, you know, founders of nonprofits. So I had lots of ideas, but, but then oftentimes was at a loss for words in a way of like, there was so much happening and so fast, like building up to the actual event. I learned so much from you and from everybody that we filmed, but you, educated me so much on music therapy and even and autism as well and uh, it was yeah you are so essential to the whole process I mean obviously as it is clear in the film but you're, you. you're all answering my questions before I ask them almost <laughs> and just sit back and so. relax but I, I was gonna say Caroline how did it how did it feel to be at the I mean you were the you were the center of this event I mean you're, there's a big stage with hundreds of people and there's you in in your dress singing for everybody to see with the brightest light on you how did uh how did it feel to be a part of that event amazing <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of sums it up but i i feel like you um you really met the moment i mean i know there was a lot of pressure there so you, uh, Actually, i was happy at the end of the stage before yeah. i wasn't nervous on stage yeah well you nailed it so we will say Thank that. You. <laughs> but I was going to ask you, Robin, uh, kind of at the beginning, and I think you answered it earlier, is this was originally a film about this event upcoming, mm -hmm. or was there something else in this, this happened to be a part of it? And, but it sounds like this, this was the reason uh, for the project was to document the leading up to this. this yeah. Kind of you know, as you know, you go into a project and you don't quite know what to expect. And two, I, did, I was living in Los Angeles and doing all that travel with the other film. So, you know, initially it kind of was, yeah, let's, we'll document this concert and we'll just sort of see what we have there. You know, I, it was kind of going in blindly, except knowing that, you know, knowing the concert was gonna occur. And Andrea had said to me, you know, you, you come, you're going to stay with us. And she welcomed me into their home. And, and there I was, we were the three of us under one roof for a few days. And it just, it all start, started to get, you know, clearer as I stayed there that this is an amazing story of Andrea and Evan and the, the what it takes to create his life and his world he you know there's a lot that goes into as as anybody any parent knows who has a child on the spectrum it it there is a lot of work involved in planning and how how is you know how are, he wants to play the tuba now we need a tuba teacher oh but he's he's also a great pianist so that's going on and and it just you know it continues and, and watching andrea who has a full-time job still she's the one piecing it all together and making this amazing, um, really this amazing life for the two of them. And, and all of that started to unfold as I stayed there. And, and then I left and Michael continued filming and then suddenly it was you know, time for the concert. So I came back and again stayed with them. So we had that ability, Michael and I, to be in there with them and being really part of their life in preparing for this concert, which was, was really exciting. It was, so, it was fantastic. Yeah, I mean, so, so overall then from kind of start to finish from the day that you, you went to Evan and Andrea's house, Michael, to the day of the, 
of the show, how, how much time are we talking about? So people get an idea. Well, I, think, I think I first went, Andrea, wasn't it in like September or October? It was a good yeah. six months that we yeah. spent. Yeah, okay. because I love the lead. She was yeah. coming from LA. We don't have the fall. Oh, and well, we do. Yeah. yeah. Right? So okay. there I was going, oh my God, look at that tree. And oh, but yeah, so I was there in the fall. And, and then the concert was in May. What, mm -hmm. the beginning of May? Yeah. May yeah. So yeah. It, it was pretty quick. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a pretty quick turnaround from yeah. kind of start to finish. I'm trying to remember how many days we spent together. Um, maybe at least four in the beginning and maybe another four. It was, it was around somewhere around, I yeah. mean, the span of time is several months, but I think in terms of filming days, what was it, maybe 10 to 14 or something? Probably, yeah. And you know, lots of phone calls and right. like that. And there's so, much, so many things that aren't, you know, obviously there's a lot of footage that didn't make it into the final cut, but, um, and other characters too, that we just ultimately were wonderful people who influenced, um, the tone of the film, but didn't ultimately make it into this sort of the, the major story, but they're, but they're there and they, and they know who they are. Um, but you know, every experience I had with Evan, Caroline, CJ, and everyone else um, really shaped the story because we wanted to get across that this, this, this idea, this feeling of you know, um, celebration through music and collaboration. And, and you know, Robin, what I really, you know, it was great working with Robin. Uh, I thought we had a, we have a great rapport. Hon honestly, it's, it's been, we've, we've tested it out now successfully. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, she was always there. Uh, the time difference between L and LA and, and, uh, and the East Coast wasn't really a big deal for us. And we just, um, yeah. We just worked it out and talked whenever we needed to. We were, we were pretty close through this whole thing, wouldn't you say, Rob? Yeah, we were. I was gonna say too, you know, one thing led to another. And after we finished filming the concert, I was invited, it was through um, the Semmel Institute at UCLA, invited to do, so they said, could you, put together something that we can find out more about music therapy. And I said, oh, I've got the perfect person to bring in for that. And so, you know, again, one thing leads to another, but I called CJ and I said, do you think, you know, I can introduce you, we can show it a teaser of this film. And it pretty much was for, it's for physicians and psychiatrists and therapists. It, it, it's a very big, it was a very big um, symposium that lasted about three days. But long, long story short, CJ put together an amazing uh, presentation. And there, there we were at, at, at UCLA showing Michael's teaser for As We Are. And, you know, again, I, I just felt like this is good. This is something that I, it's really important to me to, to let people know, you know, how healing music can be and and not only for people on the spectrum for all of us you know you you watch sometimes you watch films that involve music and musicians and you just at the end you're left with those you know the goosebumps and the feeling of joy and i feel like especially now that's really what we need and that's kind of what came out of this but again having cj come out to la and do that was just such a treat and um and, you know, again, part of this whole experience, not part of the documentary, but certainly very special. Yeah. I'll just chime in quickly about that LA trip because that was such an honor to come out and speak at UCLA. And I noticed in the, in the attendees that uh, Britt Salveson is here. So that was, I was really happy to see that name. Uh, that was such an incredible event at UCLA and really focused on the neuroscience. Um, it was part of the, the, I probably say it wrong, but there was a neuroscience department of UCLA that was hosting and how the arts are connected with the brain. So um, having the opportunity to talk about 
my training in neurologic music therapy was really exciting and it just all tied together very beautifully. Yeah. Well, I think it's one, I still, yeah, one of the things I think maybe a little bit more with documentary work than narrative work is it does seem to forge some connections that last long beyond the production of the film. Um, and you do, and I think, you know, Michael, this was another question I was going to ask, like you, you learn a lot as a documentary filmmaker. Um, you go into something with, with some ideas and no matter how much research you do, it seems like you always, there's always something new to be mm -hmm. learned and to be discovered. Um, and I know you kind of alluded to that already, but if you want to maybe expand on that a little bit about your experience. Sure. Thank you. Um, you know, when I started out, I had sort of a beginner's mind because I didn't know a lot about uh, autism or music therapy. And, but I do have a music background and I'm, and you know, it's one of the things that really excites me and, and brings me joy. So I brought that and I brought that to the door <laughs> when I went and walked through and everybody was just so generous uh, to me and to the film really that the experience of spending time with Evan, Caroline and the other uh, musicians, you know, and I'll extend this also to, you know, CJ and, and her group and the parents, um, it's transformative and that's what I wanted to you know, just get some of that into the film because to spend time with um, with these folks is to really um, experience, um, you know, I don't know, it's, it's hard to put into words, I guess that's why I made a film, but it's a, uh, well, you know, I made a film because Robin asked me to and I, but but it's it, it really was life changing for me and I'm not exaggerating. I, I learned things about myself um, and I wish I had uh, a better way of saying it, but joy is really the word, you know, when, when they, when they are playing, when they got up there and played their songs, it's not a, just about proficiency and making beautiful music. It's the feeling behind it. It's, it's all coming from this great source. Um, because, and, and, you know, that's something that's available to, you know, uh, musicians, but I think sometimes um, it's not, I think they think that it's special um, that they were, that in this concert, there was so much love in this concert. And I think that's why it was, uh, that's what I learned. Um, I did learn uh, others, you know, some other things like about the, the, the community that it takes uh, to support and um, Evan, in his daily life, right, Evan? And you could probably talk about that more. Yeah, right. Um, and he and the, and the way that he is open to help, and 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 how hard he works. Um, it it really challenged me to to like uh, open my mind more to you know my uh, I don't know similar parallels in my own life, if you will. I hope that's a kind of try to answer your question there, but. It's the experience. Great. Great. We have a, a question from one of uh, from Ellen who's watching. Um, I think this is for Evan and Caroline and CJ. Is what what are you um, what are you up to now? What have you been doing since the film, and what are you what are you doing now? We'll start with Evan. Okay. Um, well, we've been performing as we are since in November at Blackwall Hitch, right. and okay. and then we we perform stay. Uh, city of life. City of Stars and Staying in the Light. Okay. But what are you doing now? You go to where? We go to uh, a college. Uh, at at Anne Arundel Community College. But, oh, but yeah. we went to WAU. What's it stand for? It stands for Washington Adventist University. And what are you doing? There? And we and we took class from. Uh, we went with Ian. We took class from Professor Patterson, Professor McGinnis, Dr. Lau, and and Professor Dr. Thurlow, and Professor Ovieto, and etc. So you're in the band. So I'm in the band, and um, 
<laughs> and um, and also, I enjoy practicing piano in the music room with Ian. Great. All right. Perfect. Caroline, what are you what are you doing these days? Well, well, I'm going to George Mason University to uh, cover, cover like three weeks until August 21st. I'm All excited right. to go into. It's at Fairfax, Virginia. Okay. And I'm going to do performing arts at George Mason and singing. All right. Awesome. Okay. Awesome. And CJ, we kind of got a little bit of a glimpse of what you're doing these days. <laughs> um, well, I, I also wanted to mention earlier, just I want to give a, a shout out to Carolyn Sonnen, because Carolyn is a music therapist like myself. She's a wonderful colleague and, and has been working with both Evan and Caroline for many years in music therapy. So I really had the privilege of even getting to meet Evan and Caroline through Carolyn Sonnen, and she's featured in the film as well at the at the end of the trailer, um, helping Caroline remember. She, um, Carol, Carolyn was helping you hold your arms up to the audience and um, working with you, Evan, on some of the interpretation at the piano. So Carolyn is just a wonderful colleague and um, grateful for her. As far as what I'm up to these days, um, still, you know, very busy with my private practice and for the musical artist, the, the most wonderful thing um, to report is that we have a wonderful community partnership with Maryland Hall for the Creative Arts. And Maryland Hall is where the concert took place. It's where the Annapolis Symphony Orchestra is a resident company and many other um, you know, musical groups of Annapolis, the Annapolis Chorale and the Opera and so forth. And so from In the Light and thanks to the relationship with Andrea, really there's so much credit due there as well that um, the musical artist now holds all of our programs. We do, we do sensory friendly concerts. That's what we started doing initially in 2011. And also we do um, empowerment jam sessions and a weekly program. So we have really branched out into many different types of, of nonprofit programming. And uh, so, and we've gone virtual with it, which is a success. That's awesome. And I think uh, Carolyn, if, if she hasn't seen it already, is um, in our film festival trailer for about two thirds of a second. So yeah, we'll pass that along. I think Evan and Carolyn are, we have a shot of her. I'll interject there background. and say that it's at the 54 second mark in the trailer. There you go, perfect. I'm glad somebody is. <laughs> it's a great trailer. With awesome. Exact. Yeah, Thank you. Exact too. Um, uh, so we have a question from Ed, Edward McDonough. He wants to know, um, this I guess would be for um, Robin and Michael, um, maybe more for Robin, if you could describe a segment that fell to the cutting room floor that perhaps just didn't serve the story, something that's a wonderful story in itself, but that didn't quite fit in this particular story. Such a good question. And there, there's so many scenes that you think, oh, too bad that didn't make it in. I think probably, there were a number of musicians um, that we just see, you see snippets of them. You see Sunny, who is playing the piano. She does true colors in the film. You see uh, Logan, you see different uh, uh, kids from the musical artist who are, you just get a snippet of them maybe playing the piano. And it's, it's a pity, you know, I mean, you, we could have made this film much longer, but you know, in, edit, in the edit process, you just have to look at timing and you have to say, well, this just doesn't work, this doesn't work. But so I guess it's, it's just kind of, you look back at all of that and think, well, it's too bad it couldn't all be in the film. But uh, it I, is what it is. Yeah, I, you know, we talk about the other musicians. Um, one that was really tough for us to cut, right, Robin, was Logan and Will and Isaiah doing, um, there was like, uh, three other musicians. Will had this incredible version of What a Wonderful World uh, in a Louis Armstrong style and sounds just like Louis Armstrong. <laughs> and, and, the, and we had a lot of great background with them. That would be part of maybe a, 
a feature, if we had the chance to do like a feature documentary on, on the, everything, we would have been able to include them. But, and then also I would love to just make all the scenes longer because, <laughs> but um, we had a great editor, shout out to Colin Smith. Um, he has a sense of humor, he's quick, he keeps the energy moving and, um, and, he, and he, you know, he helped me uh, and Robin, uh, and Robin was great at, at, at being tough about edits too, but to, to keep things moving, you know, and keep it quick and yeah. get, you know, what, what serves the story and what's, and you have to make those decisions. It's, it's, you, you know, another thing I should say, you know, when you were talking about Louis Armstrong's song, it, there's always that component of, uh, from, from the producers and, uh-oh, we have to worry about the music rights for this song or for that song. When you're doing something involving music, it is, it is a very, it's difficult because you know down the road, you're gonna have to get the music rights for these songs. So that's part of the part of the picture too. It 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 really is a much bigger deal than I think people realize. That's true. Mm -hmm. All right. So we have a couple more questions. Um, what are your plans for the film now besides festivals? And do you plan to show it to people in the autism community as a teaching tool, or for professionals, or what's the the grand the grand plan? Should I start? I think all of the above. You know, we, um, I think there are a lot of organizations that are already reaching out now and saying, can we see the film? Can we show the film? And ultimately that's gonna be the goal. I think right now we'll see, it's so, you know, difficult to know what is gonna happen with festivals. Our, you know, we're still applying to festivals and festivals are getting back to us and, and saying, you know, we wanna see your film, but, will they be able to have a festival? Will they do a virtual festival? It's, it's difficult to know. But I do think that, you know, in the end, we would, the important thing is that this film is seen. And so if it's through organizations, if it's through public TV, you know, we're, we're game. We're gonna try to really in the next couple of years to get the, the message out and get this film seen, you know, as much as we can. Right. Yeah, that's a tough question to answer these days because nobody knows what the world is going to be doing in a couple of months or how all this works. We're just all doing our best, I guess, just <laughs> as we can. Um, question from Jeremy for Evan and Carolina. What inspired you to play music? You want to start, Caroline? Well, I like starting to listen to my music because it helped, it helped make, makes to practice a little bit with the lyrics and take your time with no rush. I like that. Perfect. Evan? And, and I enjoyed listening to uh, on the Pandora. Well, my mom is listening to Stand in the Light and I enjoy listening on The Voice. Yeah. Anything else you want to say? Me too. <laughs> I have a question to follow up uh, for you, Evan. So, so in the film, we find out that one day that you'd sort of wake up and say to your mom, I want to play the tuba. That's what I had to say. <laughs> yeah. When, when did, uh, do you remember why you decided, what made you want to play the tuba? Well, well, when we went to my brother's graduation, in 2013 of August, yeah. I had started when I was like, you know, at age 21, we went to Baltimore Grass and and I took a tutorial lesson with Jeff and that's very important. But why did you want to play the two? What do you because it's, it? I enjoyed doing the low one, mm -hmm. which the is the bass down. part. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. awesome. And it can reinforce me by holding a long tone, mm -hmm. reinforce the bass voice so you can hear it, and, and accept and something like that. That's good. The, that instrument seems like so much work. <laughs> yeah. Just, just <laughs> pushing air through all of that metal, it almost makes my chest hurt trying to think about doing well, that. How about but, carting, you know, or carting it around in a car? There's that yeah. too. We Probably made car person. purchase decisions on whether, whether or not the tuba would fit in the back. <laughs> <laughs> yep. 
Mm -hmm. It's definitely not a flute, that's for sure. Definitely. No. So, um, and this, I think we, we talked about this earlier, though, but this is the first time you've all kind of seen each other and been in the same place in, in how long, do you think, at this point? Yeah. Well, all of us together, it's got to be three yeah. years. Yeah, could be better. Well, it's, we're very happy to host this reunion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, cool. Nice to be part of this. Um, we don't have any other questions except um, I'll ask you, um, Robin, real quickly, even though you're still, this film is just now getting out into the world, but we do have a question about what you're working on next. And it does have a little bit of relevance to Woods Hole, so we'll, we'll throw that in there. So. It does, it does. And we're, we're in the final stages in what's called post-production of a film called Soy Cubana, which was at Woods Hole, as you know, in 2016 as a short, 16 minute short. It was all shot in Cuba and cut to, um, you know, two again, it was all at the same time that this was going on. In 2017, after we, we filmed the In the Light concert, the women from Cuba ended up coming to Los Angeles, stayed for three weeks, and there I was back in the saddle with my team, my amazing team, that includes my son and his colleague Jeremy Unger and Ivalo Getoff as co-directors again, making Soy Cubana the feature, which is the journey of these Cuban female acapella quartet, amazing singers, to Los Angeles. We documented the journey, their amazing performances, and we documented their return to Cuba. So it's, it's an exciting time and we're just getting the score done for that and then going into the final stages and it should be done probably this year. Mm -hmm. so we'll, be, we'll be sending it to you, John. <laughs> well, we love our music documentaries in Woods Hole, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So um, CJ, uh, this event was obviously just a spectacular, it seemed like a spectacular success in so many ways. Um, what are, what are pl plans now to continue this type of of an event, or how do you how do you keep the momentum going? Well, um, for the musical artist, you know, we have always been a very small nonprofit. Um, we really have a, a very strong local community in Annapolis, and so we're really you know very grateful for the relationships there. And it's interesting though, in um, also just from a more global perspective with with everything being virtual these days you know people are joining our programs uh, from different states and so um, that has been a really fun thing to navigate um, but you know we're just very focused as an organization on empowerment and and elevating the voices of musical artists so you know even the name of the organization um, when I meet people in, in the autism community, they get it immediately, like autist, A-U-T-I-S-T. Outside of the autism community, we so, still sometimes get like, did you misspell the word artist? Because it's very close. So it's a great play on words. And um, our goal as an organization is really to continue elevating the, the voices, the music, and the, and the people who are on the spectrum, who identify um, as autistic advocates, who, I, who use identity first language in, in their sense of who they are, similarly as the deaf community. So there's, um, there's a lot of dialogue in, in the autism community and in the disability rights world. Uh, and we really, try to position ourselves um, where we, and we have always been uh, a, an advocate for the neurodiversity movement. And so that's something that our, our organization has really been founded upon and, and we're going to um, continue that work. So, so yeah, saying small, but strong. Fantastic. So I think we got answers from four of you, but there's a question that I think everybody has sort of answered already, but about future projects. So Michael, our, you working on something else now too, or is this um, situation sort of put a put some things on hold? Um, <clears throat> I have something that I shot last summer. Um, it's a, it's kind of an epic road trip across the country with my friend Carl, 
<laughs> and his he's moving he was mo he was moving from baltimore to san jose and um he's an incredible person but one of the i guess sort of the one of the things that makes the road trip uh, extra unique is that he had recent he lives with a disability called OI and he had a car uh, adapted for him to drive it and it was the and it, and it so this is sort of the greater American road trip and uh, I've got a lot of editing to do basically <laughs> but I'm excited about that a road trip with Carl sounds awesome already <laughs> just like but he's, uh, yeah. uh, I, I think we that. are we're getting close to our time if nobody in uh, attending has any other questions uh, I think we'll maybe start to wrap things up I am again I'm just so so happy that this film is part of Woods Hole this year um, I'm so happy we are hosting a premiere I'm happy we're hosting this this reunion again um, I, I really do hope very very soon that all, all of you can be in, in the same room together and watch this on a big screen with a big audience full of appreciative weepy people um <laughs> because i think that that would be wonderful um anybody just kind of have any last last thoughts before we go that you didn't get a chance to say so by the way i just want to say thank you for opportunity for q a it was pleasure tonight to see you again hope you had a hope you had a great night and a great weekend. Well, thank mm -hmm. you very much. I think. Yeah. Yeah. And I'd like to just try and, and would, say, um, well, I don't know that we can ever thank Robin and Michael enough for you know the work they invested in this project. Yeah. yeah. And it was just clearly a labor of love, and the fact that they, you know, produce such a remarkably poignant and accurate portrayal of, of what it's like to live in this world, in this world of autism, but experience the joy that they can in the community that they were able to experience through this event and through the power of music bringing these people together. So um, we can never repay that debt. And I'm very grateful to the two of them. For, and I'm grateful to Woods Hole too. Me too. Having, recognize the Me too. beauty and the quality of the film that they put put together so i'd like to thank them so and i would like to say thank you for all the help we did yes <laughs> to Michael. perfect to everyone i think that's a great great note to cap this on and again thank you all for for lending your talent and your hearts and souls and yeah. everything to this and uh if you haven't seen it yet please um watch as we are at the Woods Hole Film Festival and uh, follow it. Um, social media, Robin, Michael, where can we, where can people follow your film and your travels here? Yeah. We should have, we on Facebook, Michael? It's a, yeah, Facebook is As We Are Movie uh, yeah. and uh, Instagram is, I think, As We Are Movie and uh, asweareMovie.com. Exactly. So, All right. Falls we'll there. And thanks again. Okay. Carolyn, You're welcome. Okay. It's wonderful meeting Thank you all. You. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a much. wonderful night and hope to see you all in person. Thanks to Jay. Bye. Bye. Okay. Bye, -bye. Bye. All right. Take care. Bye. Bye.